you're, you're glued to your TV because you wanted to take some of that fear and some of that terror and some of that despair away from them. I'd already seen the body tent and there were at least 650 bodies underneath the, the tent. And my fear was that my friends were among them. I, I didn't even have the, the guts to look. It was almost spooky because it was still turbid and, and dark, but there was so much debris. There was air conditioners, hair dryers, mattresses, everything you could possibly imagine on land in the water. It was like diving in an, on the moon or something. It was just like unreal that this was the same place I had dove before. The tsunami of 2004 is one of the greatest natural disasters in memory. Nearly 300,000 lives lost, millions displaced or homeless, and billions of dollars of aid pledged in support. But thousands of volunteers donated more than money. They gave their time, and themselves, to travel to the devastated region and lend a helping hand to those in need of relief. After the tsunami, uh, about uh, 40 to 45 people have lost their lives. From so, the orphanage? In the orphanage. Okay, Part of the Global Crossroad program is to inform volunteers about the impact of the tsunami. Paul and Michael are taking the volunteers on a visit to a local home for the disabled, which was badly hit by the waves. Hello. Hello. You know, I'd, I'd been having a, a good time making new friends and smiling, and, and um, that child, that boy, was the, only, was the only one who survived the wave. At that moment, I just, when, you know, all the, the strength and happiness I'd just seen from the people I'd just met, just it... Um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no. I don't know. 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 I don't to get out of here. Huh. It's good though, it's good. A lot of them are still here. My students do stuff great every day. It's, it's a joy to work with them. Very cool. <laughs> on this field trip, Reed Ridgeway students are getting hands-on experience with elephant trekking, a hefty portion of Thailand's ecotourism industry. I look back on what happened here and I see the resilience and the strength of this culture. And to see my students have gone through this and these are, these are their people and their family members and, and their life torn apart and to see the heart they have and just to, to see how far they're, they're coming and how much they're learning and how they can still smile and still go on with their lives and, and make their lives better instead of just collapsing in a heap of emotional mess. This is a really strong, strong culture and it, it turns me on that I'm doing something about what happened here before. I think what I'm trying to do here is to create a sense of interest and curiosity about this business and uh, get them to realize that this is uh, an ecotourism activity that they might find employment in. I think they're showing a really strong interest, so I'm excited about it. 
That's why I say uh, like I feel like a king, you know, because Thai people, uh, Thai king, just sit in the head eleven. The only king this can do that. Yes. Yeah. Sit on the head. Mm. Maybe I can find a job if I know about the elephant. Maybe do like a guy for trekking. Okay, man. Todd and Dr. Harris have decided to augment their previous site in deeper water, where the shifting sand from the tsunami won't bury the reef balls and kill the coral they will plant on them. To make sure they don't hit natural reef, they ride the reef ball down, guiding it to a safe spot in the sand. Now that the site is identified, the team is ready to launch the rest of the reef balls. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's a good method. Todd goes in for a look. He's pleased with the coral growth on the deep water reef balls. The whole economy of Pukatabin is based on tourism. Most of it died tourism. If we don't bring that back, the people here will be hurt even more by the tsunami than the physical effects. It's the livelihood, and that's critical. 